Hello? Welcome back to my channel. Today I will tell you the shocking case of a nurse who, instead of treating patients, harmed them. The case is disturbing because the victims were random and anyone who came to the hospital for help could have lost their life there. We are dealing with a person whose job it is to help and save lives, and yet she uses her position to do evil. And unfortunately, this was the case with Danish nurse Christina Eisrup Hansen. Christina Eisrup Hansen was born in 1984 in Denmark. She began her adventure in medicine with the nursing school. She did most of her training at Heller Hospital in Denmark, near Copenhagen. In 2007, she met a man with whom she later began dating and who became the father of her child. However, the relationship ended in 2012. Christina graduated in 2009 and began an internship in the emergency department of Heller Hospital. It was there that she became fascinated with working in the unit receiving the most critical cases. She even liked how unpredictable and emotional the work was. She took the exam to give her the qualification to work in the profession at Nykobing Falster Hospital. After passing the exam, she began working at this very hospital in the M130 medical ward. She worked there for a total of three years. She worked there from 2009 to 2012, and the next step in her career was to move to another department, where she would spend another three years. According to her friends, she was kind, funny and able to win people over. There was also no denying that she enjoyed the attention of men. Her behavior was not vulgar, but definitely more seductive than one would expect from a professional environment. She enjoyed feeling attractive and flirting. To some co-workers, her behavior was sometimes inappropriate. According to others, however, it was simply amusing. Once, however, there was an unpleasant situation in which Christina began flirting with the boyfriend of one of her colleagues and invited him to her home after the party. According to the staff, however, she never neglected her duties and had a very good reputation among patients. In her work at the hospital, Christina was a mentor for new employees and also represented local nurses inside the labor union. Throughout her years in the profession, she was respected by her coworkers and praised by her supervisors. She was a good mentor, boasting a wealth of knowledge and dedication. Christina had many friends both inside and outside of work. There were also people who did not like her character. It was impossible not to notice her, she loved being the center of attention. During her hospital shifts there was always something going on. One could not complain of boredom. Of course, this cannot be described as a positive thing. It is better if there is peace in the hospital because any incident could involve harm to the patient. At first this did not arouse any suspicion, although it could be seen that during Christina's shifts much more was happening. Eventually, even her co-workers began calling these shifts Christina's guard. That's when dangerous ER action and patient cardiac arrests were most common. That's when the nurse would take control and save the situation. Later, depending on the outcome of this intervention, she would collect either congratulations or condolences. Colleagues at work made no secret of the fact that they didn't like the fact that Christina took over their patients at the last minute, and later it was she who talked to the families of these patients, even though she had never taken care of them for a long time before. Slowly the situation became more and more suspicious. It started with innocent comments and jokes, but, after a few months, the first voices of doubt emerged about the nurse's good intentions. By that time, however, Christina had managed to make a name for herself. The accusations were based on nothing more than conjecture. A group of nurses gossiped about Christina Hansen's bad luck, at first jokingly, then much more seriously. Over time, the facade built by the nurse began to slowly crumble. It all started with questions from the intensive care unit about the condition of patients. Why are more and more people being sent there, in whose body can be detected drugs that were not prescribed to them, or much higher doses, of prescribed drugs. They also began to connect the facts that most of these people were under the care of Christina Hansen. There were so many cases that it was difficult to consider it a mere coincidence. It was always she who was first on the scene of a dramatic event of cardiac arrest, and it was she who administered first aid. Eventually, her co-workers decided to go to the management with their concerns. They accused the nurse of intentionally harming patients as a result of which some of them died. 
the accusations were extremely serious. The breakthrough was to occur on the night of February 28th to the 1st of March 2015. That night was unique in the hospital and will be remembered for a long time. Never before had so many critical situations taken place. As many as four patients experienced cardiac arrest due to overdose and died in the nursing unit. Christina, however, behaved in a typical manner. She was energetic and even excited, jumping into the patients' beds and resuscitating them in a dramatic, even theatrical way. After her shift ended, she couldn't help herself and shared her thoughts on Facebook. She wrote that a movie could be made about that terrible night at the hospital. Many of her colleagues knew that the post was in bad taste, especially in the face of a real human tragedy. The events of that night were so bizarre that the case was reported to the police and Christina Hansen was arrested the same day, March 1st. In June 2016, the nurse stood trial and was charged with violating Section 237, the Danish Penal Code on Murder and Attempted Murder. During the trial, 70 witnesses were called to testify and the entire trial lasted a total of 27 days. During the trial, evidence was successfully presented that conclusively showed that Hansen had administered high doses of morphine and diazepam to her patients. During the trial, research was presented that showed that during Christina's duty hours in 2011 to 2012, there were twice as many incidents in her ward as when she had time off. The final verdict was a guilty verdict, and the woman was sentenced to life imprisonment. She was also stripped of her right to practice as a nurse for the rest of her life. Immediately after the verdict was announced, Hansen appealed to a higher court. The reinvestigation of the case took more than a year, but during this time the prosecution failed to take sufficient evidence. The biggest obstacle proved to be the lack of drug prescription records at the hospital where the woman worked. It is also suspected that there could have been many more victims. First and foremost, there could have been people who had only mild symptoms caused by too much medication, or those who were able to be rescued and the reasons for this sudden deterioration of their condition were not checked. It is possible that in this case this is just the tip of the iceberg. The case then went to Osterlandstreet, which is one of Denmark's two Supreme Courts, which act as civil courts and criminal courts of appeal. The technical evidence was not strong enough to sustain a life sentence. The court stressed that there was no doubt about Hansen's illegal activities, and that her malpractice was not the result of an unconscious medical error or mistake, but a deliberate act. The problem, however, was not in proving Christina's acts, but in establishing their consequences. The Legal Service Board analyzed the available medical information and concluded that the nurse's guilt could not be confirmed with certainty. In the end, she was only charged with attempted murder because, according to the High Court, it is impossible to prove that the patients died as a result of an overdose and not because of their illnesses. It's also worth mentioning that the charges were related to Hansen's actions in 2011-12 to and did not take into account what she did in the following three years of her work. In the end, the 31-year-old was sentenced to 12 years in prison and her ban on practicing her profession was upheld. Christina did not plead guilty, and even now after so many years she continues to maintain that she is innocent. There is also another aspect of this case worth mentioning, which is potentially even more shocking. Christina Hansen was also accused of acting to the detriment of her 7-year-old daughter. In the girl's body, doctors detected a very potent prescription sleeping drug. Such specifics absolutely should not be in the body of a child, and given in the wrong dose to the wrong person can cause really serious harm. Analyzing Christina's behavior and the history of abuse she has committed against both her patients and her own child, it's hard not to guess that there must be some serious disorder behind it all. A psychiatric examination was ordered and it turned out that the woman most likely suffers from histronic personality disorder, which takes on theatrical behavior and the need to be the center of attention. In this disorder, there is a pattern of behavior dominated by exaggerated emotional expressions and a desire to make a show around herself. It is not known what exactly this disorder stems from, but it is suspected that it may be rooted in low self-esteem. In most cases, people with the disorder can function completely normally in society, only to be perceived as loud or even annoying because of their behavior, for example. 
however, the disorder itself does not immediately lead to committing crimes. Additionally, in order to be the center of attention, they may, for example, specifically drop objects to the ground or pretend to faint. They are also very keen on acceptance, to be seen as physically attractive. They will also very rarely have different views from most of the people around them, precisely because of acceptance. When issuing a diagnosis, psychiatrists look primarily at the desire to be the center of attention, mood swings, and exaggerated emotionality. Seductiveness, being easily influenced by those around them, and focusing on appearance and physical attractiveness. People with this type of personality are not dangerous, but in any group even of people without the disorder there can be exceptions and more extreme cases. This is what happened to Christina Hansen. In her case, it led to harming those around her. According to psychiatrists issuing opinions on her, it is clear that the woman hated boredom and there had to be something going on around her all the time. She didn't care that it was happening at the expense of the health or lives of others. The important thing was that she could be the center of attention, that she could provide help and that, at least for a while, there was chaos all around. This personality disorder is also very often combined with narcissistic personality disorder, and all indications are that this was the case for Christina. The latter is characterized by a mania for greatness, a need to be admired and, importantly, a lack of empathy and the ability to put oneself in another person's perspective. It is this selfishness and lack of empathy that can be seen in Christina's actions. She didn't care at whose expense it would be, it was important that she be the center of attention. According to the prosecution, the personality disorder was the main motive in Christine's committing the crimes. In court, prosecutor Michael Burson presented the situation as a theater analogy. Christina felt she was the most important, she was organizing the show, and the patients, were just like extras and tools for her to achieve her goal. She was of average intelligence, but the knowledge she had managed to acquire during her years of education and practice in the profession allowed her to use her advantage over the patients in perfidious ways. The psychologist gave his assessment of Christina's condition and said that, in his opinion, the woman did not like taking life. The only thing she cared about was recognition. She wanted to be valued and popular among her colleagues and those around her. She couldn't stand the fact that she was just an ordinary anonymous serial nurse in southern Denmark. And while Christina is probably not happy that she was captured and sent to prison, in a way the attention she was getting during and after the trial probably suited her. She was, after all, the center of attention. When the truth finally came out her co-workers couldn't believe that for so many years they had worked alongside a woman who had harmed her patients. And it was this lack of belief and the fact that this situation was so extraordinary that resulted in it not coming to light for so long. The prosecutor's office even considered prosecuting people who had suspected for a long time that something might be wrong, but had not told anyone about it. A lot of patients suffered because of this. As far as is known, however, no one was charged. In the course of the trial it became apparent how much fear Christina caused, it seemed she was capable of anything, and those testifying against her feared her anger. Now it's been about eight years since the arrest, and it's possible that Hansen will apply for parole. She is still in prison, but her sentence will end in 2028. According to witnesses, many people are afraid of the moment when she will leave prison. Some of these people have even decided to change their addresses and even their names. And that's the end of this frightening story, where people found death instead of help in the hospital. In the meantime, stay safe.